our show, Pulse by Health Job Hub. My name is Prashanti Naidu, founder of healthjobhub.com. I started Pulse to connect with all you amazing people, share incredible stories, and to be inspired. My mission is to unveil the pulse behind the pulse. Today, I have a very special guest joining us live on Pulse. It is my honor and privilege to welcome Dr. Clifford Beeman all the way from Boston, USA, to our show this morning. Good morning, Dr. Beeman. Thank you for joining us. How are you this morning? Thank you, Prasanthi. I'm very well. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you for joining us. To all our viewers, Pulse by Health Job Hub is a live talk show. So if you have any questions, please ask. If you enjoy the show, please smash the like button and share with your network. I'd like to thank our sponsor, healthjobhub.com, for sponsoring our show. In response to COVID-19, healthjobhub.com has opened our platform to all employers during this time of need to post unlimited jobs. Dr. Cliff Beerman is an anesthesiologist in Boston, Massachusetts, USA. His passion for providing health care to the less fortunate has, has began as a U.S. Peace Corps volunteer in the early 1980s. And he has subsequently participated in 30 plus surgical missions in low and middle income countries. Dr. Bierman has 35 years experience in medicine, dentistry, and public health, both nationally and internationally. Public and private sectors, academics, and private practice. He is proficient in pediatric anesthesia, regional anesthesia, airway management, patient safety, safety simulation, and delivery of anesthesia and surgical care in limited resource environments. His commitment to patient safety includes instructorship status for the anesthesia simulator, whereby trainees are assessed, then educated in behavioral and communication skills during simulated operation room crisis. In addition to travel and exploring different countries, Dr. Bierman enjoys reading novels, swimming, hiking with the dogs, and lately gardening. Dr. Bierman received his BS from State University at New York at Albany, his DDS from New York University, his MD from the University of Connecticut, and his MPH from University of Massachusetts in Amherst. Wow, Dr. Beerman, this is an incredible bio. Thank you so much for being our special guest. Please share your story about what inspired you to pursue a career in dentistry, then go on to pursue a career in medicine, specialize in anesthesia, and become a humanitarian. Well, um, so thank you very much for having me on your show. Um, I'd like to say it's a beautiful day here in Boston. Um, and um, so I think what initially inspired me on this pathway were my parents and my sister who were all very interested in education and um, the, uh, the importance of education, training and experience in becoming successful in life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, secondarily, I was inspired by some historical figures, and particularly President Kennedy, mm -hmm. who created the United States Peace Corps, which yeah. I heard about when I was a child and never got that out of my mind. And also President um, Lincoln, who I admire tremendously for um, his uh, humanitarian efforts during the worst crisis this, ever, this country ever faced. Yeah. And uh, combined with all of that, I was always very, very motivated to be the best that I could be and become all that I was capable doing. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that. You have continued to regularly participate in surgical missions to low-income countries. 
which countries have you been to on your volunteer missions? And what drives you to do the humanitarian work that you do? So having participated with many groups over the past 30 years, I have had the opportunity to travel to many different countries all over the world. Um, that being said, I would like to make a distinction between volunteerism and volunteerism. Volunteerism is really the primary objective mm -hmm. of why one would want to do a humanitarian project to right. help the people, no matter where it is that you are going. Yes. Um, volunteerism to me is a way of seeing the world through medical care. And mm -hmm. um, even though that may help people, I really believe that the most important thing is to uh, go to where your services are most needed. Yes. That being said, all the groups that I travel with that are uh, itinerant do go back to the same locations on a regular basis yes. for follow-up, which is extremely important, especially for, let's say, plastic surgery procedures yes which may be staged and maybe need to be revised as time goes on. Yes. No, that's wonderful. And tell me, please share your experience about your mission to South Africa with the Tsemba Foundation. So the Tsemba Foundation is different from most of the other organizations that I work with. Most of the other organizations that I work with, you're part of a team, sometimes yes. a very large team yes. that encompasses surgeons, anesthesiologists, nurses, sometimes yes. engineers, other types of people to help the mission proceed smoothly. Mm -hmm. And you travel as a group. Uh, everything is planned for you, the transportation, meals, accommodations, etc. And those are typically very high volume, uh, uh, very high volume trips where you yeah. may or may not be in accommodations that are um, either safe or uh, suitable. Right. Semba is different. Uh, mm -hmm. With Semba, you arrange your own transportation to right. South Africa. Yeah. And you arrive at their location, which is yeah. on a private game reserve. You get there by yourself. Yeah. And you, they provide accommodations for you while you work at Tenswalo Hospital, which is on your screen. Yeah. Tenswalo Hospital yeah. is a very large rural public hospital serving approximately 300,000 people most of whom are middle or low income. It is a uh, very uh, heavily trafficked hospital. Most of its work is in primary care and the treatment of tuberculosis, malaria, and HIV. There's right. a heavy emphasis on yeah. obstetrics and on perinatal care as well. I see, yes, that is incredible. and. How do you find volunteering with Tsemba different to any of the other organizations that you've volunteered with? So with Tsemba, you are living in very nice accommodations mm -hmm. and they're very, very safe. South Africa yeah. does have a reputation in certain areas for being, being very dangerous in terms yeah. of crime. Yeah. But this particular area is in a rural area near Kruger National Park and it's actually quite safe. Yeah. I think the only danger there would be from the uh, animals because there are no fences anymore. Yeah. So all of the big five roam freely in that yeah. area. So you do need to keep an eye out, um, especially for the predators. Absolutely. Uh, then the other aspect about Tins uh, Tinswala Chemba Foundation yeah. is that you do work in the hospital during the day. And yeah. it is very, very typical of a uh, very under-resourced, very busy developing country hospital. Absolutely. However, at the end of the day, you return to the game reserve and this beautiful accommodation where you get to interact with the other volunteers as well as the staff. Yes. And in the evening, you can exchange stories, ideas, thoughts, and even network uh, with the other members that are there. Wow, that sounds incredible and definitely, definitely different to what is on offer or with other volunteer organizations. And I'm sure each organization has something so meaningful and impactful to offer the doctor who's volunteering. Uh, so thank you for sharing that. In creating Pulse, one of our goals is to have our finger on the pulse. USA has been hardest hit with the outbreak of the global pandemic COVID-19, also known as coronavirus 
please share your experience during COVID-19 working in the USA. So indeed, uh, this has completely changed life and healthcare here in the United, United States. Um, I, uh, in my opinion, uh, we were not well prepared for this. Mm -hmm. We acted slowly in response. Yeah. We uh, do not have reliable resources yet, even for mm -hmm. testing. Yeah. And uh, in terms of treatment, uh, we're still behind the eight ball in terms of uh, medical therapy or mechanical therapy. Mm -hmm. um, with that all in mind, uh, we're now preparing the next phase, which is re-entry back into normalcy. Yeah. which I think has to be done extraordinarily carefully. Yes. And I think before we even think about doing something like that, we need reliable testing uh, to make sure that it's a safe environment to go back into. 100%, 100%. What is your medical advice for all of us who are staying home and waiting in anticipation for this lockdown to end? Well, um, it would be my medical advice in general. So in terms of your your um, physical health, you need to exercise, make sure you have the proper diet. In terms of your mental health, you need to keep your mind active, uh, read, do puzzles, take courses online. This is a great time for people, especially uh, people who may feel that <clears throat> their job may not be back when this thing gets better, yes. to learn a new skill or learn, learn a new language. Yes. Uh, in terms of spirituality, those of, uh, those who uh, feel that that's important in their lives need to try to hold on to that yeah. in this era, era of isolation. Yeah. And those who are non-spiritual should probably think about things like meditation to help with your um, well-being. Uh, mm -hmm. This is also a true test financially for a lot of people. Yeah. And it's time to relook at your budget and to rethink your long-term finances. And there's help out there, especially from the government for those who need it. This is a great time to hook up with family, friends, and your pets, and yes. to uh, get together in that regard too. Oh, that's wonderful advice. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Thank you, Dr. Biam, for enlightening us this morning and sharing your incredible story on Pulse by Health Job Hub. This brings us to a close of our Facebook Live show for Pulse by Health Job Hub. I do hope you enjoyed the show as much as I did. Please join me next week, same time on Facebook Live. I am excited to announce that our special guest joining us next week is Koshni Naidu, clinical psychologist, joining us all the way from Durban, South Africa, who will be sharing with you, our viewers, mental health tips to cope during this pandemic. Please join us again next week to be inspired. And don't forget, if you enjoyed our show, please smash the like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and share with your network. Thank you again, Dr. Bierman. It was an absolute pleasure having you all the way from Boston. Is there any final remarks you'd like to leave us with? So those who know me would say, of course I do. <laughs> so I would also like to put this all into perspective. Yes. Uh, for the past two months, all we've been talking about is coronavirus. Yes. But there's a big world out there. And for instance, last week, uh, the number of people that died in the United States from coronavirus was still less than the number of people that died from cardiovascular disease and cancer. So let's not lose sight of those other issues from yeah. a public health perspective that are still extremely important. Cardiovascular disease, cancer, yeah. um, other infectious diseases around the planet, things like malaria, tuberculosis, yeah. HIV. Um, of course, my area of interest is the surgical burden of disease and taking care of that. Yes. And of course, always last, always last on the list is mental health and Absolutely. budgeting and getting proper mental health treatment for the people all over the planet that need it. Um, this coronavirus is going to significantly impact the social determinants of health, which will have an impact many, many years from now. Things like education, nutrition, clean water, security, housing, these are all things we need to pay very, very close attention to, besides just thinking about the eradication of this particular virus. 
hundred percent. That is absolutely wonderful, wonderful advice. Um, and thank you so much for making your time available and sharing this great piece of information with us. Thank you for representing the Tisemba Foundation. I see Melanie, she's on our chat line and she is uh, so excited that you were able to share that experience of joining the Tisemba Foundation and volunteering. So thank you for that. I do appreciate that. Thank you very, very much. It's our pleasure. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And to our viewers, we'll see you again same time next week. God bless.